Welcome to the channel everybody. My name is Ryan and we are back with more Unreal World today, continuing our Caveman series. And if you just tuned in for the first time, I've got a link to this playlist and a bunch of my other Unreal World content down in the description. So check that out if you need to get caught up. Now I need to point out, unfortunately in the end of the last episode, somehow I failed to put the final clip onto that episode, so it kind of ended abruptly, you might have noticed that, but I didn't do my normal outro and stuff where I go in just a little review of the episode, but not a huge deal except for the fact that when I did end it, we had just come upon an elk, so check that out. So this is something you guys didn't see, was just I stumbled upon an elk in the world map and here we are engaged with it let's take a quick peek at this beautiful boy he's a little bit fatigued problem is we're also pretty fatigued ourselves. we're at negative 66 percent but we're gonna try and hunt him down we'll see how it goes now speaking of seeing you can see here on the world map that we are down in our hunting grounds but the cave where the series takes its name from our caveman lifestyle is right here the white x so i think in today's episode once we finish our hunt and if we're successful we'll process the animal we're gonna head back to our cave we've got enough meat and enough fur so we need to get something done inside the cave like i say it's not much of a caveman series if we don't spend at least a little bit of time beautifying and improving our home so like i said that's what we're gonna get up to today guys but first let's try and take out this big bull elk And there we go. Wow, that was actually kind of a tough hunt. Lost it a couple times, thought I was going to lose it completely, but managed to get it and get it breathless. So it is on the edge of the screen, but and we're all we're pretty close to breathless ourselves at negative 77%. Once, of course, I've mentioned before, but if you knew at once that we're at a negative 100, we literally can't move. I mean, your character is forced to stop and rest, just like the animal can barely move right now, too, because it's breathless. But we're not quite there. We've got just a little bit more endurance than it does. So this should be a pretty straightforward fight here. Usually I go for the legs, trying to preserve the hide, but still be as efficient here as possible. And <laughs> can take about 20 hits sometimes with these large bull elk, but... It, there it is it has died and of course first thing it's always advisable to do is go ahead and rest rest away that fatigue because now we're going to be doing a little bit of crafting and processing of the animal i'm going to skin it first beautiful so we got a harsh for winter elk skin not not surprising i mean we rested but at the same time my hide working skills not that great Compared to the rest of my skills, it's the second highest, but overall compared to like a master, yeah, we're pretty poor. 
But that doesn't matter at this point. All we can do is keep practicing with more and more game like this. So what I'm going to do is, of course, get this animal moved over to the nearest shelter, which is this blue X right here. And once I've got it all set up, we're just going to leave it there, let it process, and we're going to head to the cave. Like I said, spend a little bit of time in the cave today. So I hope you guys are excited for that. We've got plenty of food now, so it shouldn't be an issue. It's just a waiting game till all the meat is finished drying. All right, it is the small hours of the morning, very dark, very cold out here, but the gear that we crafted up early on in the run has held up quite nicely. I do have to mention that. Now, I am starving, but don't worry, I did roast up at least 10 cuts there, so we've got a little bit still recovering from that starvation. Obviously, it takes uh, about a day or so of steadily eating. But um, anyway, we're heading north. So I've prepared all the meat. It's being dried down below. Still a couple days left for like our earliest kill. Uh, no, I'm not going to encounter lynx just yet. I'm carrying way too much stuff to go hunting. Because I've picked up all the furs, all basically all the good crafting material. We're bringing it back to the cave. This is our true home here. There it is, you can just see it on the map. And I've overloaded myself, so let's rest. I'm extremely tired too. He's gonna feel good for him to finally curl up in his nice, beautiful cave. Here it is, the back of it at least. All right, so we're gonna circle around. Yeah, so I'd love to be able to get some skis going. I don't know what the holdup is. I need to make some boards. I had wanted to get some really good quality boards from an NPC, for instance, have them hire somebody, have them chop the boards for me. But honestly, even if I had like perfect boards, I'd still probably end up making crappy skis just because my crafting is not great. So we might just go ahead and bite the bullet and do it. But anyway, let's check this out. This is my pile of just very meager stuff that we left here initially and now we get to add to it here let me hold on yeah i still do have my masterwork broad axe nice nice i haven't found the cordage that i thought i purchased but i don't know maybe i'm losing my mind anyway one thing i should mention is i brought the unfinished skin here from our most recent kill we're gonna go ahead and process that at this location because I didn't want to spend any more time down below. But not a big deal, because in case you've missed it, our wonderful little cave home here actually does have some water just down here on the slopes of the hill. Beautiful, right? Here's the nearest little piece of a tiny little spot. It's the closest we've got, but honestly, it's not bad compared to some mountain areas I've seen. They don't have water for miles. Okay, the skin is being prepared. It's got a couple more stages to go. So one thing I'm definitely going to need to do is find a log so I can go ahead and prepare that skin. Plus, we're going to need it for other skins and stuff. It's a good idea to have several, too, just for some backup firewood, especially if we're living in a cave where, I mean, it's probably not the naturally like the warmest place poorly lit so we want to have plenty of firewood and as you can see just below the slopes of our our little mountain home there is a nice little thick forest here so this is a pretty good spot i've mentioned that we're probably going to set up a second cave home near to the coast once the weather warms up we're going to do some seal hunting but i like this spot too the cave itself is a little bit steep steep there's some cliffs in it but we can live with that. We're going to make it perfect. All right. So right now I'm just getting, like I said, a little bit of lumber saplings so we can make cordage in case we do happen to get any kills in this location. I might also set up just a trap or two right around the front of the cave in case there's any interested bears who might want to, you know, stop by and sniff around, see if this is a cave they might like to move into. We're going to want to discourage that, but... I think I don't think we'll have much of a problem with that. At least I hope not. Unfortunately, my last series did end by me getting killed by a bear. But we're not going to dwell on that too much. This is a whole new run. So let's be a little bit more careful. Oh, what is that? I do see some footprints right here. Oh, it's willow grouse tracks. Whew, okay, it's not a bear. The world is a dark, dark place right now, but it is nice and bright inside our cave. So you can see it's late evening, but my guy is lively. That's one of the benefits of cave life. You don't have to worry about sunlight or keeping your schedule. 
as long as you got enough firewood, you can just, you know, live and breathe whenever you want. Be active, crafting. So anyway, the point is right now, it's still a mess in here. I've got my gear scattered all over the place. And I've got a couple of logs brought in here. A couple of tree trunks, I should say. Log is something different. But I've also got some big stones. So these are the 14-pound variety there, the big boys, not the little tiny rocks. And we're going to need a bunch of those because we are going to do one little bit of building here. Go to the wood building we're gonna build a fireplace actually yeah that's what we want fireplace so we put it there pick a direction where you can see oh okay we're gonna need to build a sea floor and ceiling first that's not a big deal but i just wanted to see how many stones we need i think it's 35 so we've started with three so you can see i've got a lot of foraging to do the good news is when you live on top of a mountain there's usually plenty of stones out there so i am going to go ahead and sleep a little bit uh, I'm starving again. That roasted meat didn't hold out forever, unfortunately. And the dried stuff is still a few days away. So, oh, there's a stone right there. Uh, I'll just pick up both. We'll use the rocks down the road, I'm sure, for crafting or making arrowheads or something. But, yep, so I've got, like I say, a lot of scavenging to do. But this is a big step. If we get that floor ceiling part built and then we can actually lay a stove on top of it, that means we can, we're can we one step closer towards smoking the meat that we get, which is vital for food preservation during the hot, humid months of the summer. So I stopped by one of the local mountains in the nearby region, not far from our home, and I was getting some rocks, of course, for our, some stones, I should say, for our oven. Look at what I found, though. One valiant little reindeer has climbed all the way to almost the top of the mountain. Actually, I can see his tracks at the very pinnacle of the mountain right next to me. So this guy made it all the way up here. What are you looking for there, small reindeer doe? And it is spooked by me. I, don't, I haven't seen any of its herd. I think this one might be alone. Hold on. Let me just check and see. Okay, I do have a rock and a stone on me. I'm going to go ahead and drop these. Whoops, I'm sorry. I'm getting all excited pushing the wrong buttons here. Yeah, it's not a lot of weight, but really I don't need that. Let's drop those two. I will come back for that stuff, but naturally, we've got to chase after this boy. So, it's a little hard to see it, but there is a nice little easy, convenient way down. If we go right here, and then that way, and that way. As long as we're not going diagonal, we should be able to get down without having to climb. Sometimes it's tricky to find the right spot. I'm going to go ahead and sprint. Oh yeah, we're coming for you, Mr. Reindeer problem is we are surrounded kind of by forest here all right where to go i'm gonna go ahead and stop sprinting okay. we'll we'll start to hide here we're going to stealth i don't even see him uh -uh. but he can't be too far although there is there are trees everywhere darn it i was hoping maybe it'd be kind of a clearing down below the mountain but Looks pretty thick down here. We're still on his tracks. He's very small, fresh reindeer tracks leading southeast. Still not on my screen here, but that's okay. I haven't given up. Oh, I just saw another track. Let's stick to the tracks. That's one thing that is essential. When you're trying to hunt through the forest, you pretty much have to follow the tracks. When I'm out in the open, I can kind of go by where I think, like what general direction I think they've gone. And you can see them from a distance. But in the trees, man, you got to stick. You got to be like a bloodhound. Okay, so southeast. That would be this direction. There's another set of tracks right here leading east. Okay, we'll follow those. Um... I don't see... Oh, there's another set right there. Okay, where's it going? I think it's going this direction. Running northeast. Okay, she's heading back north. I see the tracks. Uh, northwest. It is tricky, though. I do not enjoy hunting in the trees. I'll tell you that. Most of the time, I don't have any success. Quite honestly, I think I'm just going to give up on this one. I have no idea where she went. Ah, 
it's all right it's not why we came to this region as you can see very close to the home so i should have set up some of those traps i was talking about for the bear bear traps will catch a reindeer too if they get unlucky and stumble into them but nonetheless just a fun little encounter on the top of a mountain it is the moment I have not been looking forward to. So I've got the stones. There's actually a little bit more than I need here, but we'll, we'll use more stones later on for making a cellar and things like that. But including, we also need boards to make the cellar. So that's, that's the next step, unfortunately, is to make some boards. And this is a long process, but we've got the ax. So I go into my skills, M for Timbercraft, and B for boards. There it is. Oh, wow. Oh, that was so quick. I can't believe how fast that was. I'm used to my characters taking forever. Maybe I typically don't have... Yeah, I mean, Timbercraft is our best skill. So, it may, well, one of our best. Actually, Agriculture is number one. Didn't see that initially. Anyway, I'm getting distracted here. Timbercraft, hey, hey, that wasn't as terrible as I thought. I would have probably made skis a lot sooner if I knew about how easy that was going to be. But the important thing is we've got ourselves some boards and some slender trunks. I think I'm going to just put the stove right here where my character is standing. Okay, I've got some stuff there. Let's try it here. So first we need to do... The wooden building and we just do floor ceiling i've tried this before and it does work yeah you can build the full floor ceiling inside of a cave there it is it's hard to see but it's just a little gray square that indicates the floor there and of course above it there's a ceiling piece we don't see but i'm gonna go ahead and sleep real quick and we're probably gonna wake up in the dark yeah need to probably start a new fire let's grab some branches and some slender trunks i got more slender trunks outside in front of the cave so that makes it i wanted to try and be prepared here and we've got some stuff over here oh look this is where my cordage went oh there it is i knew i bought some i wasn't crazy yes 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 so we've got all this stuff here too i just stashed it over here in the corner like a little pack rat and forgot about it all right, let's drop all that stuff here. And good news is I've got some extra cordage. So let me sort this out and we'll get back to building our stove. Okay, there's all that stuff sorted out now. And we're going to be making some skis too, finally, after this. But let's get this stuff going. So we go back to our building screen. It's nested under the wooden building tab and fireplace there it is different from a sauna stove i think functionally sauna stove will work for smoking meat but it's a, got a little bit more components to it there it is <laughs> oh isn't it beautiful we have done it we've actually built a stove or a fireplace inside of a cave folks now let's go ahead and push some of the stuff into it i don't have much here to burn so we'll just throw a little bit in there i want to test it Oh, good, good. It doesn't ask me to confirm that I want to build a fire. For whatever reason, certain spots, it, it will ask you if you want to build a fire inside a cave. See how it says, really? Start a fire there? Question mark. And you have to confirm it every time. It's a little annoying, but with the fireplace, we don't have to worry about that. Look at this. Look at this beautiful glowing fire. All right, so we have basically the first step. Now, like I said, I want to get some skis going, just that's for personal transportation. But we also need to get uh, five more stones, and then we're going to make a cellar up here, too, so we can actually drop our meats once it's all prepared and store them. So I don't have to carry around the bulk of my food. But it'll stay a little longer in a cellar, too. So like I said, we're not quite done yet. All right, guys. Well, first, before we head out and start searching the slopes again, looking for a few more stones, I'm going to make these skis that I've been talking about literally since like the second episode. So ski stick. Here we go. I think we finally got everything we need. There's the ski stick, of course, is important for you're going to have to wield that in your hand here. 
There it is, inferior quality. Yeah, I'm not expecting these to turn out to be good. But so for this to function, you've got to wear skis and you've got to have the ski stick equipped. Now, if you have a northern spear, it has to be northern variety, not just any old spear, but you can actually equip a northern spear and use that as a ski stick as well, or instead of a normal ski stick. So it's kind of cool, especially if you're a spear fighter, you're always ready to go in the winter. But anyway, we don't have one, so... Just thought I'd mention that, but now I should have what we need to actually make the skis themselves. I've got two boards here at my feet, so let's go back to our crafting, transport, and skis. Number two, very important. Four pounds of fur. Luckily, I picked up not enough. Okay, let's grab a little bit more fur here. What do we want to use? Probably this harsh fur. Yeah, we'll use this big old 19 pound harsh fur and we'll repeat that with the R button. Brings us right back to where we just were. We'll finish off, or we'll start with the 1.7 pounds of fur and then we'll finish it off with the big bundle of it. And finally, the last component, the one I thought I didn't have, but I finally found our yarn. There we go. Now this is, this is a process here. Probably going to take a couple hours, but let's go ahead and speed it up and we're done Woohoo! all right we've done it we are very tired and worn out needs to take a drink desperately needs to eat something too but we have nothing to eat so now that we've got the skis in fear poor skis oh that's sad but that's okay uh we're gonna go ahead and equip those you are now wearing skis and look at that oh we have done it we're skiing boys and girls and we can ski right into our cave not a problem at all so we're ready to go. And again, it's going to help preserve my endurance level having skis on in the winter like this. Because if we look at the snow, let's just look at it right out here on the slopes. This is snow is thigh deep. So imagine trying to walk through that. Now we're actually skiing up on top of it. So it's tremendously helpful, increasing our speed of movement, reducing the amount of endurance that we expend while moving, helps hunting and all that good stuff. Of course, it is a skill. And as you can see, we're only competent at it. But I can tell you from experience playing the game if you put on a set of skis early in the winter by the end of that first winter once you take them off you're going to be darn good at it you know, probably have it maxed out in two winters but anyway all right so i think you know what before we actually well let me drop off this stuff i was going to say before we actually build the cellar maybe i should go grab some of that meat but that hopefully is finished. But honestly, that seems like that's probably backwards. We should probably build the cellar first and then move the meat up here once we're ready to store it. And we are back out here in the forest once again, just in front of the cave. And I have just chopped down another tree because in order to dig a cellar, I'm probably going to need a shovel. Something I forgot we hadn't made yet. And... In order to do that, we're going to need blocks of wood. So blocks of wood are made from the tree trunk. But once we've chopped ours into boards, you can't make it after that. So I'm going to need to start this fire. I don't even think I can do this in here because I can't see. But there we go. A little bit better. And so we've got the boards there. Now, like I said, we're going to repeat with shift or S for skills, then M for timber craft. But at this point... Instead of B, we do blocks. Chop felled tree into blocks. There we go. All right. Nice. So now we should have a bunch of blocks here. Yeah, there's eight of them. Beautiful. Now that, that's pretty big. Like it's pretty heavy to try and move those. So I'm just going to sit right here. Rest for a moment. Let's go ahead and... I was going to sleep, but we'll, we'll go ahead and craft it while the fire's still going. Now the shovel is actually under carpentry wooden shovel i do have a knife we got everything we need it's probably not going to be good quality but that doesn't matter it's just a temporary thing eventually we're going to want a metal shovel too a wooden shovel is good temporarily like i say but 
yeah you definitely want to upgrade typically i go and i trade for a nice metal shovel with the mod set we have with the mining and blacksmithing you can make one but you do have to start with the wooden shovel and kind of bootstrap your well your way up into metals and stuff but like i say it's much easier just to buy one to start off with but anyway guys it's dark again so let me get that fire started and then we're gonna try and see if we can build a shelter inside of a cave i'm sorry a cellar inside of a cave i think i've got everything we need now so we've got the shovel we might need a few more slender trunks but i've got myself a torch let's go ahead and light that so we have some light to see by there we go now let's try and build this inside the cave as i mentioned i don't know if i've ever done it oh okay i do need some more slender trunks but after a quick look there i've got them right here we'll just grab a couple of these those are supposed to be my firewood but well, it is better to just cut down some actual tree trunks and chop firewood instead of using slender trunks. Those are much more helpful for crafting. But anyway, let's do this. Yes. <laughs> so that's the thing about cellars. Even in the winter, you can do that. Oh, it got paused because my guy got tired. Yeah, even in the winter. Oh, and we can't see now because the fire went out. Oh, shoot. Okay, let me relight it okay there we go so it's definitely going to be annoying having to relight the fire like this constantly inside the cave but i think what i might do is when we do set up our next cave the second one we'll probably move it a little closer the stove to the entrance because if you get here you can see like the light does kind of spill in from the entrance to the cave so we'll probably set some of our, our stuff in there and the deeper parts of the cave will just used for storage and whatever else but anyway we're we're still learning cave life is new you know anyway okay so i'm gonna light the torch so we can see there we go there it is you can see it's kind of a shadow it's not completed yet so let's finish it off there we go boom yes and of course you can do a shell a uh, cellar like this in winter doesn't need to you don't need to worry about the cold ground like you would just building a normal or trying to dig a normal hole that is but anyway so we've done it this is a good perfect spot for it too so we can smoke our meats right here in front of the stove and as soon as they're done i just literally push them into the cellar right there so we can preserve them instantly very very nice guys the cave is shaping up very well very well like i said there are advantages and disadvantages to cave life but one of the big advantages is we don't have to spend a ton of time chopping trees preparing the logs and building the walls i mean it's a long process in this game putting together a true cabin but anyway now we've got mother nature's cabin here over our heads i think that'll do it for today's episode though like i said we've got a, another trip to head south and pick up some food because my guy is very hungry but we're ready we're ready to move in here permanently guys so i appreciate everybody tuning in for today's episode hit that like button for me of course i love hearing from you your comments are always welcome guys thank you so much for joining me and i will see you on the next one Hey everyone, I just want to give a personal thank you to my Patreon supporters. Their contributions help make my work possible and I am tremendously grateful to them. I'd also like to extend an invitation to you to help support my work on Patreon as well. Your donations allow me to upgrade my PC and avoid the dreaded hardware despair. It also gives me more time to devote to new projects and create longer content such as live streaming. No matter what what you decide. Thank you for visiting my channel.